Hello, welcome. Welcome to Let's Talk NBA with Rick and my good friend Jack. How are you, brother? Good. Everything going good? Yes, sir. We got a lot of confusing happenings in the NBA. Teams that should be in or out, and the best two records in the West and the East are all gone. Well, What's going on with the NBA players? Well, I can tell you that I know Jack, and I and and I told you've you. Been on, you've been on Phoenix all year. Phoenix, I've and I've been guy, on. This guy has told me from the start that Phoenix Phoenix was going to be in the finals. I mean, and I told you, what, Milwaukee. How much money have you made on Phoenix this year with, uh, with the, that type of philosophy? The discretionary income has been a little bit uh, on the low side, so not that much, but enough. We're not paying you enough at the studio here. No, sir. You're not making the big bucks yet. No. You're not making the ESPN bucks over here. <laughs> yeah. Not enough to be an art hey, collector. Maybe it's time to give a call over to ESPN or you know. NBC Sports or Fox Sports and uh, get, a, get, get a gig with them because if we're not paying you enough to be betting on the no. Phoenix Suns, I, I, I feel terrible. I feel sheepish. Uh, you hear that, John? We're not paying them enough. Do something about that. Are no, you sure no, you're no, not, no. You sure you're not spending your money on other things, gambling or, you know, living no. in Vegas is, he can be tough. No, but I'll, I'll keep my talents here. I won't take it to South Beach. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't want to go away in Bristol, Connecticut, and be on be on show at ESPN. You're happy over here. Um, you got it. This is the best show around. Come on, uh, I know you all enjoy it. And again, we want to thank you for watching us and following us and, and being part of our fan base. It's uh, it's really refreshing to have such a great following, and we are immensely grateful for for what you do for us. And I know you're also immensely grateful for this fan base that we have and all the likes. Absolutely. The um, every every week that, that you guys tune in, you know, it's a privilege to do the thing, to be able to do this. Um, it's fun. And, of course, uh, you know, it's, for us, it's when we're right, we, we like to, we, we'll, we'll, we'll like to rub it in. And when we're wrong, uh, we get it rubbed in. So <laughs> when I'm right, when I'm right, we go right over it. When he's right, I got to hear about it. Like, um, you know, Concerning Phoenix and the NBA, but I saw. I concerning about Phoenix and the NBA, <laughs> concerning Phoenix and the NBA. If you didn't see that game last night, uh, watch it back on one of the networks uh, because that Phoenix Clipper game was uh, got totally out of control at the end. It was the, like the, the longest the series should the, have been one one, and the Clippers blew it, man. How how Paul long? George, eighty nine percent free throw or misses two free throws. My God, man. You're a superstar, Paul George. It I mean, choked. I couldn't believe it. Eighty nine percent or. This isn't Giannis shooting free throws. This isn't Ben Simmons shooting free throws. This is an 89% free thrower. Clippers up by one point with 8.2 seconds left. He misses two free throws, and, of course, the game ends up uh, Phoenix winning it on a slam dunk with almost no time left. Yeah, point seven. Well, what a terrible way to go. Um, what a terrible way to go. That was like the longest five minutes oh, of, my God. Uh, I mean, of it, regu it, it regulation time. It was a basket, time. and, I, I mean, I hope all of you saw it. If you didn't. You can see it on replays quickly, the slam dunk that won the game. And DeAndre no Ayton on a, on a great pass by Jay Crowder. Uh, wow, what a play. I never thought Phoenix, Phoenix would win that game. I was telling Jack, you know, you talk about bets and you talk about discretionary coin. I looked at the odds last night, and it was the Clippers getting four and a half, and I said, my God, I was lick, licking my chops. I said, this is one of the games I talk about. I don't bet a lot. I bet games that I know I'm going to win. And there's no way that those teams are evenly matched. Now, Chris Paul coming back in the next game and, and Leonard not coming back is, is going to be tough on the Clippers with Chris Paul back in there. But uh, I looked at it and I said, my God, there's no way the Clippers will lose by four and a half. They're going to win this game. Anyways, I put that bet in and I won it. But those are the type of bets I'm talking about. Anyways, back to that series. It's two to nothing Phoenix. And oh, but, but um, Clippers are in trouble. Cl Clippers have been here before and we've always said. Yeah, but played this kind of team. This Phoenix team is good. They find a way, man. And you know what? It's the one team that I watch, and it's interesting, and I was observing this last night. They have a great coach. Mm -hmm. Great coach. Mm -hmm. Should have been coach of the year. He Nothing. draws up plays. I constantly – I saw a couple of times after timeouts last night, they had plays, specific plays drawn up. Not just pass the ball into the star, let him dribble around like the Clippers do so much with Paul George, and you f shoot. Um, they had specific plays set up. And I was like, look at this guy. He's in the huddle. They're setting up plays. Everything is not, not going to Booker. Everything is not going to Devin Booker. They're setting up plays. And to set up that play at the end of the game, that slam dunk, and a perfect pass, of course, kudos to Crowder. Great pass. Everything had to go right for them to win that game, and it did. Paul George had to miss two free throws. 
They came down, Mr. Phoenix missed a three. Bridges missed a three out of the corner. The rebound got batted around, and for some reason it went back to Phoenix. Inbound pass. Crazy game, right? Yes. Crazy game. You know, they've played well all year. And, and, and again, you've done a great job of being a fan, and I know you've, you're well over a million on earnings on those Phoenix games. But you know what's funny? If you would have bet Phoenix last night, you would have lost. So you can't say bet Phoenix every game because they haven't always covered. They were four-and-a-half-point favorites. If you, if you loaded up on Phoenix last night, you had a loser. I loaded up on the Clippers because there's no way that they're going to get beat by four-and-a-half points last night. I don't know what's going to happen with Chris Paul back in the lineup, though, if, if the Clippers are now outmatched because they don't have Leonard. It was even with Leonard and, and, and Chris Paul out, but it's not even anymore. It's going to be a disadvantage for the Clippers with Chris Paul in there. I, I think they might get swept. I don't think they'll get swept, but they're I, in trouble. But I think, um, but I think definitely uh, Phoenix will, will win the series. Uh, one of the things I've been talking about all year long with Phoenix is just their depth and it's next man up, um, and they're showing it right now. Because really, Booker didn't play well last night. He had yeah, uh, that injury were, was tough, boy. Um, he was tough. Because oh, to to tough. be able to to be able to well, the, he had a broke he he got stitches in the locker room you know mid what, he came out but he came, came out he and, came out with uh, well, he so couldn't he couldn't breathe he and he was breathing through his mouth the entire in his nose the, 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 the entire time so you know oh he has a broken nose you'll see the mask on tomorrow night and that's where I'm a little bit because uh, it, it's 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 different but Chris the mask is not for every player no with with Chris Paul um it's. It's definitely going to make a, a big difference with him back. Um, big difference, huge. So what, another facilitator. So what do you take away, or is it that the Suns won two without Paul, or or basically when I say the Clippers lost lost two and Chris Paul wasn't on the floor? That's a good question. I think, and, and, and it's, it's easy to have conjecture and say we think this is going to happen, but if both teams would be healthy, if Leonard was healthy and Chris Paul was healthy, I still think it would be the same kind of game it is because I think it evens each other out with them both out of there. Um, they do different things really well. Um, the Clippers, there's a lot, a lot of pressure on Paul. Um, Paul George. Yeah, playoff P. He coined coined himself that, playoff P. When Leonard isn't in there, I, I don't think that – Phoenix feels the same kind of pressure when Paul isn't in there. Um, and I think that, you know, that mid-range jumper that Booker can hit about any time is really amazing. He's, he, he's a good mid-range shooter, and he, he finds his way into that key, and he gets into the paint, and he makes that whatever it is, seven, eight-footer. Um, he's really good. Um, he, he's on his way to being one of the true superstars in the league. And, you know, he has been impressive. Um, a kid like Trey Young has been impressive. Um not to change gears here, we've talked enough about Phoenix and your, you know, your exploits and in, in, in being a Phoenix fan and telling our audience all year long, really from the get-go. But let's talk a little bit about the Atlanta-Milwaukee series. Um, does Atlanta have enough to play with Milwaukee and beat them? Not four games. You don't think not, Atlanta not, can take four? No, not four games. Um, I think Milwaukee is set up to – right now to be able to withstand Milwaukee is is, is uh, set up different it's not like you you're you're just going to uh shut down one guy cuz Giannis yeah. is going to get his well Giannis is going to get his and uh, what do you think can Capella, what about can, can Capella play him no can Capella in the middle for Atlanta play Giannis mm-hmm. No. I, I don't think so. so. Capella's pretty good, but I don't think he played Embiid that well. Um, I think he held a lot and, and got away with it. Um, Embiid was was never at full strength. I think Giannis is, is at full strength, and he's feeling it. Giannis is feeling it, man. And, and, so, and they're going to be tough to beat. So one of, one of the things, when they talk about these uh, these defenders, the, the, you know, the, these all-star defenders, or first team, I want to say, uh, one of my when I really noticed it was when uh, Kawhi Leonard got MVP when the Spurs played uh, Miami, and they had him on uh, they had him on uh, LeBron. LeBron probably scored what thirty something points, 
but he still got MVP. Same thing again with uh, uh, what's his name that was on Golden State, Draymond Green. No, the other, the other Kevin uh, Durant. Who are you talking about on Golden Defender State? that end up getting a uh, MVP after guarding LeBron. LeBron's average thirty, oh, 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 um, 37, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking points. about uh, Iguodala. It, yes, Andre Iguodala. How do you get he got a, MVP? Yeah. How do you get MVP for crazy. defending a guy that that averages thirty seven points yeah. per game? No, he hit a couple shots, big shots, and that was really it. No, but, but, um, the, the, he, but he I don't. Played I don't, well, I don't but get not it. as good enough to be MVP so, in my opinion. So my thing is Giannis is gonna get his. Yeah, um, Giannis will get his, but it's just like but the, you know in Philadelphia, Embiid, Embiid got his, but nobody else did anything. <laughs> Philadelphia, man. I mean, Ben Simmons, what an anchor. <laughs> Philadelphia, the best record in the NBA? They looked horrible. In Brooklyn, they had an excuse. I mean. What's the excuse? Well, they got too many guys out. In, in, in too the, many guys in Kyrie? You know, it's Kevin Durant. It became Kevin Durant and others. And, and Harden was very human because he was playing with a bad leg. Harden was not Harden. And, you know, um, Irving is out. And guys like Joe Harris that has stepped up all year, Jeff Green, they just didn't do anything, man. Brown, um, those guys just didn't do anything. Brooklyn, Brooklyn in the end was a one-man show, and they couldn't win it with the one-man show. And, again, it's going to be Milwaukee, Atlanta. And I'll go back to the same question. Is Trey Young and others enough to beat – Giannis and some pretty good players. Not, not, not enough to Middleton's win. Middleton's pretty darn good. Not enough to win four games. You know, Lopez. People don't think about Lopez a lot. He's been around. He's a fine player. Wasn't good enough to play on the Lakers. I mean, what a joke. He, he was the best center. He played one year with the Lakers. Uh, didn't have a good year because they had a lousy team. But he, he's the best center they've had since Shaq. Uh, I mean, Lopez is a good ball player. He and, and is. People don't realize that he is a big difference. Connaughton, a guy who comes off the bench, is a, is a great player. Um, Forbes that comes off the bench for Milwaukee is a great player. So I think Milwaukee is going to win that series. And I think Milwaukee is going to be in the finals, and I think Milwaukee is going to win it all. I know some bold statements with a few weeks to play. but No, but I, no, but, no those are the teams. The, the, the backups are playing well in Milwaukee. Um, Over it, a it, month it, ago I said Milwaukee was going to do it. that I said was going to be a big difference maker for this Milwaukee team that they, that they brought in near the end of the year? Was it Holiday? P.J. Tucker, oh, Holiday's, no. they resigned him. Holiday's been with them. Holiday's great. I mean, oh, Holiday's one when of the When they big brought three. Tucker, Tucker in. P.J. I... Tucker, you see him, the grit, the grind, how he gets in there and just bangs and, and takes takes the tough the tough assignments and guards the best players, and he he bangs away in there. P.J. Tucker is a fine player. Yeah, but he, he, he's a hard he, hat. He, he, he roughs them up, worker. but he doesn't stop them. He's not a uh, – he's not a... Listen, the stars are going to be the stars, but you're going to wear them down. And a lot of times in these games when you've seen uh, Milwaukee end up winning at the end of games, it's because he, he is wearing down the star. Um, P.J. Tucker has been great. Of course, when you have a guy like Drew Holiday and you have a guy like Middleton and you have a guy like Giannis, um, people don't realize those are really good players. And then you have the, you know, the role players, you know, like a, like a Lopez, you know, like Tucker, like Forbes that come in, like Connaughton that comes in. Milwaukee to me is, is – is, is, bunch of hard workers well coached and you know i think they're going to do it i think this is milwaukee's year as we get closer to the you know finals to to win it all to win it all so you're saying it now when there's I'm, only 14 put it out early well, what do you mean early we got two more rounds to go i've been saying this since the season start that the suns were going to win and here they are and uh, about two months ago, I, you asked me, and I said, Milwaukee's going to win the East. And you're like, Did they're going to. Did you gonna... say that? Yes. I got to watch that show back. I don't remember that. You said Milwaukee. Who did I say? Uh, you said the. the I um, think I said Brooklyn, right? You said Brooklyn was too talented. I and said, you said, you asked me, I are they good said enough to. I it was going to gonna be Brooklyn and the Lakers in the finals a couple yeah, months ago. Yeah, and. I, and I, I, I'm, I'll step up and say that. But and neither of them are. are right in now, today, and today, today, which is reality, today. It looks like Phoenix versus Milwaukee Bucks, and I think the deer will shine. Fear the deer, man. 
Hey, the sun's Fear. gonna the Fear sun's gonna be too bright for the for the Bucks. Oh, it, they're gonna play like a deer in the headlight. Yeah, I, you know it, it's gonna be fun. We, it's, we're not there yet. The Clippers may come back, and we haven't even started the Atlanta Milwaukee series. Atlanta may continue to surprise. It may happen. Very well coached. Uh, speaking of coaches, a mm-hmm. lot a lot of changes in the NBA. What is it? Seven, eight. Yep. New, well, it, new coaches, and, and everybody's waiting for the playoffs to be over because to get the right coach in there. Right? All these teams. Are looking for new coaches, you know who who's who's the hot commodities out there? Give me a couple of the hot commodities to be NBA coaches this this coming season. So right off the bat, we want to look at Jason Kidd. Um, He's going to he, get I, back in the mix. I think um, the with the He's league. He's not going to stay with the Lakers and Frank Vogel. No, with the league with the league being very uh, in a sense uh, guard driven. To have him as their coach, especially he was a prolific uh, shooter as a. As a um, as a player himself and an NBA champion, um, I think a Port- Portland would be a good a good landing spot for him, or even a, in a New Orleans would be a good a good spot for him too. Um, then we have uh, Chauncey Billups. I Chauncey's think, a hot commodity, man. He's, he's done he's, a great job with the Clippers. He, he's a he's another shooter. Chauncey's a hot commodity. He's another. Um, when he was a shooter, he was a prolific shooter himself. Uh, did win a championship. So you're you're bringing you're getting that championship pedigree coach that has that championship mentality. So um, he'll be good. And then um, Becky Hammond from uh, the Spurs. Yeah, the, the young lady. Yeah, I think, you she, think she's going to get a head coach. I think job? she will. I think this is. You this really is her... do think that we're going to yeah. have a female head coach in the NBA this year? Yeah, it'll never happen. Okay. She's a couple of years away, and she's done very well under. She's under the best. Popovich is the best coach. He's the, he had an incredible career. So she, you, she's learned well. No, but and, I'm. And t- it's not a thing about men or women or. or no. She she is a it's, she has become a star coach in the NBA. And she's is, a bench coach for Popovich, but I don't think she's going to get a coaching also, job this year. She's this is the year. Remember I hope when, I'm wrong. Remember when I told you that uh, Eric the Enemy would not get a job I this year, I, and you you're like, oh no, no, this is the year. I'm still I, surprised the Enemy didn't get a job. But, He's not interviewing. But, but I know he. I knew he wasn't going to. Right, that's just like I. Why? How did you know that? No, not to skip around about, but we're talking about coaches. How did you know that that Ben B enemy wouldn't get a job? Why? Because if he was going to get it, he would have gotten it already. Well, he would have been. He he would have been. He would have been the first. He so would have been the is first he one. Is going to get a co- job next year after Kansas City wins the Super Bowl again? No. Yes. He. But it's going to be. It's. It's going to be a. Um, not nec- It's going to be. I need to give it to him because of what he's done. Um, no matter what, they're basically going to give him that head coaching job for his next venture. Let's get um, back to NBA. But, but with NBA now, I think this is this is her year. Uh, this I, I disagree with you. If she doesn't get it this year, I disagree. It, it, the the, the door is going to be closed for the I next ho- few I years. I hope. I hope, and and I want all the fans to know that. I hope that she gets the job. I, it would be the first woman head coach in the NBA. I, I think it's fantastic. She's done a great job in San Antonio. Well trained by Popovich. Uh, what I'm curious about is. Uh, is D'Antoni going to be back in the league? Now, you know, he's been assistant over there in Brooklyn. And uh, is Steve Nash assistant? Is he going to be back in the league after all those great years in Houston? No. He's definitely going to get a job. No. So, and then this is, this is the reason why. He's definitely going to get a job. This is the reason why I don't think he's going to get a, he's going to get a, um, a spot this year. His style of play wears down your stars. Right now, they're looking at they're looking at their uh, the stars as million dollar investments. We cannot wear them down, and his style of fast pace um, beat them up. Definitely, fast you don't pace. you don't need that with the three ball right now, um, and that's not going to be conducive to the body. So I don't think right now, no, because you notice that they weren't doing fast breaks and all that stuff in um with the, with the. Uh, Nets, yeah, well, they Brooklyn, they weren't playing that Brooklyn style. Brooklyn didn't play a lot of fast pace. No, they they, 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 they were not. They played a lot of half court basketball. And um, as a head coach, that's his style. You know, that's another thing. I I I think that Steve Nash is a very average coach. I I think he didn't do a great job. Um, they had it's a lot a of injuries. It's a first year coach. Yeah, but he had a lot of talent and they had a lot of injuries. I I don't think he's the man. You know, my my guys that I think that are really the hottest commodities are Mike D'Antoni. I think he's going to get a job. Um, Chauncey Billups is the hottest commodity. 
Nate McMillan, is Atlanta going to resign him? Or, or, or have they waited too long now? He is interim coach. Ah, uh, he's got as but, interim coach, he can go anywhere now. But is, is Atlanta going to pony up with enough money and sign him? If, or is he going to go someplace else? If if they don't, he's going to end up going elsewhere. Well, of um, course he's going to get a job. He's he's done incredible for Atlanta for taking over middle mid season. Look where he he's at. He's in the Eastern Conference Final. They, they were hey. in last place. Yeah, and they got on a winning streak. He he showed them how to play basketball as a team, and and, and they've been great. He he definitely, to, in my mind, has been coach of the year. Definitely, it, in my mind. Well, you and know, he also it, changed the culture once he once he took over. And that, that's uh, you know me, I'm always big on culture and uh, the fact that you can see the difference in the in the mentality. And uh, right now in the playoffs, they don't ever feel like they're out of a game. Never. Look at what they did with Philadelphia, coming back down 18. 24. <laughs> 24. In the third quarter. <laughs> yeah. That so, was embarrassing. So, By the way, Philadelphia, you know, you definitely are the disappointment. Philadelphia is the dis- disappointment of the playoffs. They really are. And Ben Simmons, uh, as a professional athlete, shame on you, that you wouldn't hone your game, learn how to shoot a jumper, learn how to uh, make free throws. Shame on that young man. And everybody saw it. He was an open book because it is the playoffs. And it was, it's been the topic since Philadelphia lost. He's not even going to try to be on the Olympic team because he's going to train all summer what, to get better, which what, he should do. He should do. And Doc, Doc, Doc said he's going to work with him, which is – What uh, happened during the year? They had several months to work with him. What, they waited what, until what, the playoffs could be, to no. know that he couldn't make free throws. Come on, a, a top player like that, they're hacking him and, and putting him on the free throw line like they do. A, they did like DeAndre Jordan and Shaq and those kind okay, of Okay, so then what was, on, what, what, was it, what was Shaq's excuse? Shaq he's didn't, a big, sh- bulky center. Okay, and? And it's tough to make free throws with all that bulk. I know. So, anyways, I'm not a good free thrower. Anyways. <laughs> they, hey, they, they, then you shoot like Anthony Mason. Anthony Mason used to shoot like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he, I, I thought he was as big as they, they came with, uh, with um, NBA players. Yeah. So, guess anyways, what? You change your form. Philadelphia, what a disappointment. Again, um, I'm not surprised. I don't, I've never felt Doc Rivers was a good coach. Uh, he can't. He, he got lucky in Boston because he had leaders who took over, and they were the guys with, you know, uh, Kevin Garnett just said, get on my back, let's go, boys. Uh, they had winners over there, and, and that's why Boston won. I, I don't think Doc Rivers is a good coach. He didn't do anything in, with the Clippers, a talented team, and he didn't end up doing anything with a very talented Philadelphia team. If you don't win at all, you didn't do anything. Like, I'm but, sorry. But, but, but come on. How do you, you, how do you, how do you put – how do you put – Ben Simmons lack of being able lack of confidence lack of a shot on Doc well it's very simple if uh, you're playing for me you're in the gym every morning at 6 o'clock shooting free throws every day you're going to shoot 500 to 1,000 free throws I remember they, they used to talk about Kobe Bryant after a game he'd shoot 1,000 shots before a game, he'd get there and shoot. Uh, a lot of those stars are like that that we don't hear about. If you're that interested in your game, if you're that interested so, in so, being the so, best, so, you so, practice and practice and practice. So, there is no excuse okay. for a guy making that kind of okay. money. So, there is no And excuse. it goes back to say, why? No how, is, how is Doc Rivers going to be the one to get blamed for that? Because you didn't what? say – You didn't say He's uh, not the coach? But you didn't say He's Phil, Phil Jackson. You didn't say Phil Jackson no. made sure that Kobe Bryant stayed after practice and shoot. Phil Jackson made sure that that after many players no, are self. No, you said Kobe stayed after practice and shoot. After Kobe games and or shot. after game and shoot and practice. And so Kobe did it. Ben That's Simmons correct. have to do that himself. Not not Doc. You can't put that on Doc Rivers. You can't put Absolutely, put, put his confidence, lack of confidence, to even take a dunk when the game is on the line. No, he he fell apart. The thing about it is, so, but, so you can't put that on Doc. You got to abso- put it on absolutely on him. Absolutely, I put it on Doc. No, because you are the leader of that team. If you have a player uh, that is not doing well, it is up to you to go to that player and say, "Hey, this is what you need to do to get better." Not every player. And you don't think he does few, that? How many Kobe Bryant's were there ever in the league? One. How many Kobe Bryant's? One Jordan. One. What? Hey, one. One. But Edmonton. how many Ben Simmons are in the league that a coach has to tell them, "You need to step up, son. You need to be better." They. It. It. It, it's, it comes a point where it becomes a coach's responsibility. I'm sorry, and and I just don't think Doc Rivers is a good coach. 
But you know, we can talk about that all day long. Uh, so, so that, no, 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 we and, 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 and we're we're gonna, we're gonna go back to that. So go back to what? To as far as players doing what they're supposed to do to get better. Yeah. Um, it starts with the individual. There's exactly, because no our most improved player of the year. It starts with the individual. You know what he did? He went into the gym, and he did what he's supposed to do. One of the things that he said when he when he played with, and I'm talking about um, Julius Randle, when he played with Kobe. What, one of the things that he said Kobe did was anytime he he flew into a city he would find he'd find a gym That's and he'd correct. go and he'll go work out there and Back he to Kobe Bryant, and then he at, God rest his soul. he adopted that that um philosophy that philosophy and then and he, he ended continued up, it he continued it and ended up getting better and now he he got uh, most improved player and he was you know basically top in the top five or ten as far as uh, MVP that's that's how much a difference maker he made based on him changing his but but that's so so Thibodeau did not say you need to go into the gym and go work on this. Thibodeau set their bar as far as these are my ex- expectations of you and this is what I think that you can do as far as pushing him saying take over the take over the the, the lead and go score. Let me ask you this question. Do you know when Julius Randle adopted that philosophy? He adopted it after Kobe died, and he realized that he wasn't doing the things to be the best. And it's funny that he, he became a better player after the passing of Kobe because something inspired him. And I'll give you a perfect example that just has to do with just somebody out on the streets. You Take a guy who works out. He's always worked out. And he stops working out and puts on a little weight. And he's like, damn, you know, I'm not working out. I'm not doing the thing, but I always worked out. I was always great at it. But his wife or one of his kids says to him, hey, Dad, why aren't you working out? You put a little weight on. Why aren't you doing this, this, and this? Oh, you're right. And it inspired you to go, it inspired the person to go back to the gym. On the other hand, you have the person that always works out no matter what, never puts on the weight. Nobody ever tells him. He doesn't discuss what he does with everybody else because he's self-driven. That's a self-driven workout guy who does it on his own. This person needed some inspiration. As a coach, it's up to you to inspire your players that aren't meeting the program, that aren't part of the program that you need them to be in, that that are not meeting the expectation is the word I'm looking for. When Simmons throughout the last couple of years they talked about his shooting has not met the expectation, nobody has held him accountable. And again, I don't really. He the- tried. Uh, they, they showed videos in the, in the um, in the off season him working on his three point his three point shot because he went several years without ever attempting one. Well, maybe because they he need to get ha- him a psychologist to help his mental. Game. Maybe he does have a mental but, but- issue, to, a mental block to to get over. Um, and guess what? He's gonna to have to work on it. He'll get more time now than instead of the seventy-one days well, in between. He, and and they were they were practicing is, as much. He is an open book right now because the whole world saw what his failure. But anyways, let's talk about let's talk about the successes and um, the teams that really have stepped up. And, and that's Phoenix, the Clippers, Atlanta, and Milwaukee. You think Phoenix is gonna win it all? Yes, sir. Okay, you heard it here. I say Milwaukee. He says Phoenix. By the way, my friend is going uh, on a road trip with his family on vacation. He's not going to be in the studio with me. Uh, we're going to miss Jack he, because he puts so much great knowledge into what we do here. He has a lot of great opinions and a very knowledgeable guy on sports. We, we want to thank you for what you've been doing for us, and we're going to miss you for about five, six weeks. But we look forward to Jack coming back. He's going to come in on Zoom with us. But uh, You know a, it's not the same in the trip. studio. But I appreciate well, it. Thank you. As long as the superstar is here, we're okay. Ah. We're going to be just fine as long as I'm here. I hate to say that. But, hey, you know, he but, may be but, the superstar, but, as long as but I'm we here, know role but as players long, do but their as thing. as long as I'm here, we're okay. Ah. Anyways, um, we're going to miss Jack. Uh, all seriousness, it's, it's a fun show that we do here. We, we love to banter. It's all in good fun. We are the best of friends away from here, but uh, we love to chop it up with, with the sports game, and we don't always agree. We agree on a lot, but uh, – the NBA has been a lot of fun this year. It, it will be done with the shows by the time you get back. This NBA season will be over, and then we'll be into NFL, which is going to be fine. We'll be jumping into NFL August 1st, so we'll be talking that about teams and predictions and so forth. But we wanted to thank you all for watching, and uh, I know you all wish Jack well in his travels with his family to the East Coast and to his, see his family out there. God bless you. Be safe, and uh, have a great time with your children and your family, and we, you'll be missed. Thank you. We want to thank you all for watching. Keep watching us. And uh, 
thanks for helping our numbers grow and uh, we're getting good followers, a lot of great uh, reaction and likes and thanks for watching us at YouTube and uh, the various places. Ro Roku, Apple, WWDB TV, we're grateful for your viewership. We thank you. We look forward to talking to you next week about some more NBA. Thanks for your input. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Talk soon.